ayo re mlaku mlaku nyang tunjungan ayo kan re ayo re rame rame pepe Surabaya in this video I'm gonna mlaku mlaku nang tunjungan I'm gonna walk on the tunjungan street and this street used to have restaurants hotels shops for the colonial european elite so it was expensive this building behind me was the english department store you could buy textile here it was also called white way and late law named after the english owners then it was called shola which is an abbreviation of the names sumitro ingwibusono ong lim and ang in the late 90s it had competition with the building in the back it's a Tujungan Plaza shopping mall so it closed down in 1998 and it recently has been reopened I think an office of the town hall is here and also a museum of Surabaya which you can visit because it's free Rame, Rame, Restoration and reappreciation of the buildings on Tunjungan only happened five or seven years ago because if you look on the Google Maps and Street View to Tunjungan, you still see the buildings behind those iron sheets. And, and I believe this building behind me is the building where the mother of my grandma of my mother's side, so my great grandmother, worked as a tailor. And back then, here you could get the European fashion. And my grandma told me that after school she would visit her mom here and she would also learn uh, tailoring upstairs. And on the bottom floor you had the windows where you could see the clothes. So, this is the highlight of the Tunjungan Street, the Hotel Majapahi. It's opened by an Armenian guy named Sarkis and his brothers and his family also got hotels in Malaysia and Singapore and it got opened in 1911 but the Art Deco facade you see in front is from 1936 I think also designed by Wolf Schumacher Back then it was named Hotel Oranje named after the natural color of the Netherlands and the royal family of the Netherlands but it's also an historical place because at the back of me you see the flag back then it was red, white and blue the Dutch flag and they tore off the blue part and came red and white, the Indonesian flag, in September 1945. So this is a very important place and they renamed this hotel to Hotel Majapahi after the Hindu Buddhist kingdom of East Java. Some buildings still exist, like this one, and the one beside me, in the past it was Top of Wang, now it's the Indonesian Press Museum, and they also sell watches of Psycho and Alba, as you can read. But beside me, you have this orange iron plate. It used to be the most prestigious restaurant in Surabaya. It was the Helendor restaurant. You also had Von Winger, Ready Shop, Hof & Co, Hofbaum, and Sun Life Insurance. You can also see it in the only colored film of Surabaya from 1941 this one and there's also another building that's gone that's Tokonam it was a Chinese shop it's gone because of the Tujungan Plaza some are still there but not in use like this one this used to be the menswear shop Safel Pool and later it was known as Toko Kundadas I cannot talk about Tujungan without going to the Tujungan Plaza shopping mall uh, the first shopping mall was opened in 1986 and 60 then there are five of these shopping mall buildings. There are shops, there's a cinema, there are hotels, there are apartments, there are offices, all the stuff. And the reason the shops on the Tujungan Road are closed is because these kinds of shopping malls are popular because they have air conditioning, which is cooler in the tropical heat. Across the Tujungan Plaza, you still see this Art Deco building from the 1930s. It was the Apotek Simpang uh, pharmacy on the Simpang Road. Then it became a car shop and a sports shop. Behind me is Bedung Grahari, which means the prominent building. It's already here since 1796 as the residence of Governor von Hovendorp of the CSC, the Dutch East India Company. And back then the entrance was at the back, 
along the Cali Mas. Later, the entrance moved to the front. And since 1932, it's a residence of the governor of East Java, and there seems to be an event coming. And across of the Gunung Grahadi, there's still an uh, old post office. It's now a coffee shop, I think. And if you go further back, you see the Jogo Dolo. It's a Buddha statue from 1289, locally known as the Fat Boy, built in honor of Kartanagara, the last king of the Singhochari kingdom, which was centered near Malang. Then it stood in Trolam, the capital of the successor of the Singhochari kingdom, the Majapahit kingdom, and since 1817, it was moved here to Surabaya. The street is called Jalan Pemuda, the same name with this building, Balai Pemuda, and this one is built in 1907 as the Simpang Society along the road that was still called Simpang back then. It was a social club for the Dutch elite and it said that it wasn't allowed for dogs and Indonesian. And after Japanese occupation, this was the headquarters of the Indonesian Revolution Youth, the Pemuda. Back then, the Dutch and the mixed Indo-Europeans were convicted and executed. It's known as the bloody Bersia period. And since 1961, it's a cultural and tourist center. You can see a model of Surabaya, and across the road, you can see an abandoned building. It used to be a cinema. In Dutch, it was Maxim Bioscoop, and in Indonesian, it was known as Bioscoop Indra. At the moment, they're building an underpass, so this road is closed. But we're going to the legendary ice cream place, Sangrandi. So this is the famous Graha Ice Cream Sangrandi, the ice cream store of Sangrandi. It is very old. It started in 1930 by the Italian Roberto Sangrandi, and I think he was one of the first ones who introduced European, Italian, gelato style ice cream. So that's why it's famous. So I really want to buy ice cream and also walk about this takeaway ice cream. I got a bag with ice cubes in it. I'm not gonna lie, it's so good. The ice cream is so good. It's chocolate ice cream I have. It's really refreshing. And also I'm walking on the tree, so really cool and chill. Okay, price is 18,000 rupiah. Okay, I know you can get cheaper as Dover or somewhere else, but this is legendary. This is the city hall or Indonesian Balai Kota, built in 1930 by the architect Cosman Citroen, also responsible for the Dharma neighborhood. And it's a typical Art Deco style, to be precise, in the style of Amsterdam school with little Indonesian touches like the large roof for the tropical heat and rain. On the Jalan Pacaran number 17, next to the Abdil Gloria church, you still see this old church from 1927, and it used to be an Armenian church. Colonial Surabaya used to be an international place, so you have people from everywhere, so even Armenians, and they mostly came from Persia, or as we now know it, Iran. And this church was built for them, and then was known as the George church. And if I'm not wrong, it's now a Christian school. There was also Armenian church in Jakarta at the southwest corner of the Medan Merdeka. But that one is now gone because the Bank of Indonesia isn't there. Surabaya is a naval town. The marine is stationed here. And along the Kalimas, you see this peculiar thing. It's a submarine and not just a submarine because Indonesia doesn't produce submarines. It's a Russian submarine built in Vladivostok in 1952. And how did it end up here? Well, in 1962, Indonesia bought this submarine to liberate West Papua. But West Papua was still under the Dutch as Dutch New Guinea, and Indonesia wanted Indonesia to be complete like the Dutch East Indies. So they wanted to have West Papua. So in the 60s, Sukarno was a bit aligned to the left, to the communist side. So he was kind of a friend of the Soviet Union. So he got this submarine. It almost ended in a cold war between Netherlands and Indonesia. And high up, Russia and the United States, but it didn't end in a complete war. The Dutch had to give up West Papua. First went to the United Nations, and then it went to Indonesia, and now it's a province of Irian Jaya. And this submarine is called Pasopati, and you can visit it. Across the submarine, there's Jalan Kayon, and on number four and six, there used to be the synagogue of Surabaya, so the place for the Jewish people. It is gone now, no one knows what happens and who demolished it, but it's gone. And there's a website online, I will give the link, and there you can see how it looked like inside. I'm now walking next to the Plaza Surabaya shopping center, and this used to be a hospital where my grandfather of my dad's side also worked together with the famous Dr. Sutomo. 
So the Amaya has these bridges where you can walk um, across the road so you don't have to cross like a madman and stick out your magic hand. And they also have an elevator, so that's good. So this was a video about Kunjunga. Now more videos about Surabaya, Jakarta, Jogjakarta, Borobudur, Malang, you name it. Go and watch it. Re, ayo re, melaku melaku nyang Kunjunga. Ayo kan re.